Hello and welcome to another amazing Strappy and Next.js video. In this video, we're going to take a look how to use social providers such as GitHub or Facebook or any of the providers that's supported by Strappy to use authenticate your user in your front end application. Here you could see a simple Next.js application which has log in with GitHub button. If we take a look inside my Strappy project and we go into settings under providers, you will see that I have GitHub enabled with all my credentials that I'll show you where to find. And don't worry, I will revoke him later. But what this does allow you to use any one of these providers as a way to authenticate or create user in your Strapi application when your front end user is logging in. So back in my application, if I click log in with GitHub, it's gonna redirect you to GitHub where you need to add your authentication credentials. Once you fill in your information and click sign in, it's going to authorize your user via GitHub. And you're going to be redirected to your dashboard. Now, if you take a look inside a Strapi application, you will see that we have a user that was created and this is coming from our GitHub auth. And what's even cooler, this dashboard route is protected. So if I log out and try to manually go into the dashboard route, notice that I'm not going to be allowed unless I click the GitHub button to log back in again. And what's awesome about this project, this demo is using Strapi 5 release candidate. You could learn more about it in this blog post, which I'll make sure to link as one of the items in the description. But more importantly, whatever you learn here in regards to authenticating your account with a social provider, this works the same way and Strapi 4 as well. And without any ado, let's go ahead, set this project up locally and take a look at the code for our front end project to show how this functionality was implemented from handling our redirect, where inside our app folder, we created a connect route redirect that handles that functionality. And here we're going to take a look how to make the request to our Strapi backend, make sure that we get all the credentials and set our JWT HTTP only cookie, and you know it's HTTP because that's what I set it up here as in settings, and redirect us to the dashboard if everything is good. And more importantly, we'll look in greater details how we are using Next.js middleware to make sure that we make a call to our Strapi endpoint to make sure that our user is actually logged in to check is a user actually logged in and return our user if so. And this way we are able to handle that redirect inside our middleware. So if the user is not authenticated, you don't get to go to the dashboard. So let's jump right into it. Instead of setting up Strapi from scratch, including the Next.js front end, we're just going to use this example repo. Don't worry, I'm going to cover all the code in the details that you could use the snippets in your personal project if you want to implement this functionality. But for now, let's go ahead, get started. And the link is going to be in the description to this video. So I'm going to click on the code button. I use GitHub CLI, which is the best way to interact with GitHub. So my terminal, I'm gonna paste my command and click enter. Let's do ls to see our folder that was just created and let's cd into our Strapi project. If we do and take a look inside our package JSON, I have some nice scripts for you to get everything set up very easily. So we're going to run yarn setup to get that process started for us. Once everything is done, you could run yarn dev to start both your front end and your back end. Let's first create our first Strapi admin user. So Paul Bratz, paul.bratzlavsky at strapi.io. And the most secure password is monkey1234 because no one would ever guess that's what it is. And now here in Strapi, I'm just gonna go into settings and I'm going to show you that if we take a look under providers, we don't have our GitHub provider enabled yet, but we'll do that in a second. And now if we navigate to localhost 3000, you will see our amazing front end. And if you click on GitHub, it's gonna complain this provider is disabled because we did not enable it yet. So let's enable our provider to work first. 
And once everything is working, we're gonna dive deep into the code inside our Next.js project. First, we're gonna log into our GitHub and create a new GitHub app for which we could use our GitHub social credentials to log in. So clicking on your avatar, navigating to settings and scrolling to the bottom, you're going to see this developer settings option. Let's go ahead and click on it. Inside, we're gonna click on OAuth apps and we're going to create new OAuth app. I'm gonna call it Strappy 5 Auth. And now let's create our settings. Because we're testing our app in development, we're going to point to our local development URL. For instance, my Next.js app is running at localhost 3000. So that's exactly what we're going to do. You could keep the application description optional, but you need to provide the authorized callback URL. Again, we're going to point to our local host where our Strapi is running. And that URL is going to be our local host. And in production, obviously you point to your deployed project, but the endpoint is API connect GitHub callback. Next, go ahead, click on register application. For Strapi, we will need our client ID and let's also generate a new secret key. You will have to validate via GitHub. And what's to do? you're going to get a new generated key that we could use in our Strapi application. Back in our Strapi admin, let's navigate to settings under providers and find GitHub and let's click the edit icon. We're going to say enable true and paste in our client ID. Next, let's go ahead and copy our client secret and add it as well. And finally, we need to point to our redirect URL that we have in our Next.js application. Taking a look inside our front-end project, under source, inside app, here we could see a route for connect slash GitHub redirect, which has our callback route that we created. And we'll take a look at this in a greater detail in just a second, but first let's go ahead, add it inside our Strapi application. So let's replace this with the path to our front-end application. And based on the route that we created, it's gonna be connect GitHub redirect. And let's click the save button to save all of our changes. Here you could see that our GitHub is enabled. And here in our GitHub settings page, just make sure you click update application to save all your changes that we made. And now the moment of truth, we're going to attempt to log in with GitHub. I'm gonna click the link. It is going to call our redirect to redirect us to GitHub provider. We're gonna authorize our GitHub account and boom, we've been redirected to our dashboard. So now if I go back to my Strap application under users, we could see our new user has been created based on our GitHub auth. And that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and log out and take a look how all of this logic works in our Next.js front-end application. So now let's go into the details of how the auth flow works and how this process is integrated inside our Next.js application. You could find this in our documentation under providers, but step one, the user goes to your front-end application and clicks on the button that will connect with GitHub. The front-end will redirect you to the strappy auth GitHub provider endpoint. So when we click on this button, so taking a look in code on the front end, under source, in our app folder, under our page, we have this provider for our login. And here we have a link that will redirect the user to the Strapi GitHub provider endpoint. So by clicking on the button, that will start that first step. Once we are redirected to GitHub, we are shown the user GitHub login screen. Once done, you're going to be redirected back to your Strapi and you're going to have a callback access token. And the Strapi backend is gonna redirect us to the front end of our Next.js application. And in my current example, I created a route that expects this redirect. So inside of our application in the app folder, if we take a look at connect, GitHub redirect, we have a route which expects that callback. Then inside that route on our front end, we call the backend one more time and provide that access token. 
it's either going to create that new user and return the JWT token, or if the user already exists, it's just going to return the JWT token. So in our example, once we call that strappy callback endpoint and pass the auth token that we got from GitHub, we're going to return a JWT token for the user that exists or is going to create a new user and return the JWT token, which we are setting here into cookies using cookies from next header. And we are making sure to set it as HTTP only. Once that happens, we redirect the user to the dashboard. So here, if I click on GitHub, once everything succeeds, we are redirected to our dashboard. Now, after I log out and I try to hard code the URL to point to dashboard, notice how we're not redirected to the dashboard. So how are we protecting our routes? That's where the Next.js middleware comes in. So taking a look at our middlewares.ts file, we could see that inside our middleware, we have a function that gets our user that's currently logged in. And we'll talk a little bit more about why we're doing this. Then we're getting the current path and we check if the path starts with dashboard and the user is not okay, go ahead and redirect them back to the homepage because they're not logged in. So you're probably wondering why are we checking for the logged in user and not just checking for the cookie. The reason being, we might have the cookie. So let me log in, let me inspect, look under applications, under cookies. We might have our cookie here, but the token may not be valid to the user that's logged in. So we're taking an extra step is to actually call our strappy endpoint. And let's take a look at the service, user me loader. We're calling the user.me endpoint in Strapi, which will return if a user is logged in or not. This way, if there is a user that's logged in, we're going to get that user data. And that's what we're using to check in our middleware if there is an actual user that's logged in into our application. And that's how we're doing our check. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any strappy burning questions, of course, you could ask them in the comments, but even better way is join us on Discord because Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. CST time and also a little bit earlier in the morning if you live in a different time zone, we have open office hours that we would love to have you join and ask us some questions. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.